This video is about sexual reproduction in plants. Flowering plants also called angiosperms use sexual mode of reproduction. Since sexual reproduction involves fusion of gametes, plants also have the male gamete and the female gamete. They are present in the flower. The parts of the flower help in reproduction, so we need to understand the parts of the flower. First one is the calyx. It is the outermost whorl of a flower. It has individual units called sepals. When flower is in bud stage, the calyx encloses the rest of the flower. Calyx is usually green, but sometimes it may be colored, then it is called petaloid. Calyx may be prominent or it may be absent. The second one is the corolla. It consists of many number of petals. It is the second whorl of the flower. Petals of some flowers are fragrant. They are usually colored, thin and soft, thus attracting animals and insects for pollination. Coming to the reproductive structure of the flower, we have andricium and gynecium. Let us understand andricium. It is the male reproductive part of a flower. It has stamens and it is the third world. Each stamen comprises of two parts which is the anther and the filament. Anther is the tip. It is supported by filament. Here pollen are produced by meiosis. Anther has microsporangia which are usually four lobed structures. They are the pollen sacs. In these pollen sacs, microspores develop into pollen grains. The filament is thread-like structure keeping the anther in place. The next part is reproductive part is the gynecium. It is the female reproductive organ and the last whorl of the flower. It is composed of pistil and it occupies the central position of the thalamus. Parts of the pistil are the stigma, style and the ovary. The ovary produces ovules. Through meiosis, ovules produce megaspores which in turn develop into the female gametophyte. The stigma is at the top of the carpel. It is the place where the pollen grain lands. Style is the tubular structure that connects the ovary and the stigma. It transports pollen from stigma to the ovary. If both male and female reproductive organs are in different flowers, then they are called unisexual flowers. Example, coconut, papaya, watermelon, maize, etc. If the male and female reproductive organs are on the same flower, they are called bisexual flowers. Example, lily, rose, sunflower, tulip, hibiscus, mango, etc. Now what is pollination? Transfer of pollen grains from stamen of one flower to the six stigma of the same flower or another flower is called pollination. It is said to be the first process of fertilization in a flowering plant. Pollination may be of two types. It may be self-pollination when pollen is transferred from anther of a flower to the stigma of the same flower. It is common in dioecious plants. In self-pollination, there is no diversity in the genes. Therefore, purity of the race is maintained. Plants in this case do not depend on external factors for pollination. Small quantities of pollen grains will have good success rate of pollination. The disadvantage of self-pollination is that there is no mixing of genes, so no new characters or features are introduced into the offspring. The second type is cross-pollination. In this type of pollination, pollen is transferred from the anthers of one flower to the stigma of another flower. In this case, the two flowers are genetically different from each other. Cross-pollination is always dependent on pollinating agents to cause transfer of the pollen. 
the advantages of cross pollination is that it introduces new genes into the progeny so it improves resistance of offsprings to diseases and changes in the environment it is the only way unisexual plants can reproduce we also have to understand pollinating agents as pollen is not able to it is not capable of locomotion pollination involves some agents for the transfer of pollen grains especially in the case of cross pollination so there are abiotic agents which is wind and water and there are biotic agents of pollination which are insects birds and animals so these agents help in transfer of the pollen grain let us understand the structure of the pollen grain pollen refers to the powdery product responsible for the production of the male gametes of the plant pollen grains are termed as microgametophyte the pollen grain is surrounded by two layers the outer layer is called exein and the inner layer is called intein pollen itself is not the male gamete there are two cells the generative cell also called the reproductive cell and the vegetative cell which is the non reproductive cell the generative cell divides to form two male gametes the vegetative cell is responsible for providing nutrition the intein grows out of the germ pore to form the tube pollen tube now let us take a look at the structure of the ovule ovule is the structure of the plant that develops into seed ovule consists of a stalk and the body the stalk is called funicle one end of the funicle is attached to the placenta and the other end to the body of the ovule where it attaches to the body the part is called hilum the body of the ovule shows two ends the basal end also called the chalazal end and an upper end called micropylar end the main body of the ovule is covered with two envelopes also called integuments they leave an opening at the top of the ovule called micropyle inside there is a large parenchymatous tissue called nucellus nucellus is the inner part of the ovule it has a layer of diploid cells and it is a sporangium it produces megasporocytes which will undergo meiosis to form megaspores therefore nucellus of the ovule is diploid in nature from this arises the megaspore ma mother cell megaspore mother cell or the megasporocyte is a diploid cell in which meiosis will occur resulting in the production of four haploid megaspores in most plants only one of the megaspores develop into megagametophyte while the other three disintegrate the megagametophyte which is the functional megaspore becomes enlarged and forms the female gametophyte that is the embryo sac initially the embryo sac is uninucleate with further growth the nucleus divides and forms eight nuclei four remain towards the micropyle end and four towards the chalazal end one nucleus from each pole move towards the center and form a pair of polar nuclei these fuse to form 2n nucleus which is also called polar fusion nucleus or secondary nucleus three nuclei at the micropylar end form the egg apparatus and three at the chalazal end form the antipodal cells in the egg apparatus the middle one is the largest and is called the egg ovum or oosphere the rest two are the synergids which are also called the helping cells what happens when pollen is transferred to the stigma 
upon transfer the pollen germinates and grows through the style to reach the ovule the microspore or the pollen contains two cells the pollen tube cell and the generative cell through the pollen tube generative cell travels and reaches the embryo sac in the meanwhile the generative cell divides to form two sperm cells the pollen tube enters the ovule through the micropyle one sperm fertilizes the egg cell forming a diploid zygote the other cell fuses with two polar nuclei forming a triploid cell that develops into endosperm there are two fertilization events in angiosperms which is why it is called double fertilization the fertilized ovule forms the seed whereas the tissues of the ovary become the fruit usually enveloping the seed after fertilization no other sperm can enter the embryonic development begins zygote divides to form two cells the upper cell and the lower cell division of the lower cell also called the basal cell gives rise to the suspensor which eventually makes connection with the maternal tissue the suspensor provides root for nutrition to be transported from mother plant to the growing embryo the terminal cell which is the upper cell also divides giving rise to globular shaped pro embryo in dicots the developing embryo has a heart shape due to the presence of two rudimentary cotyledons in non endospermic dicots the endosperm develops initially but is then digested in this case food reserves are moved into the two cotyledons as embryo and cotyledons enlarge they become crowded inside the developing seed and are forced to bend ultimately the embryo and cotyledons fill the seed at which point the seed is ready for dispersal embryonic development is suspended after some time growth resumes only when seed germinates the developing seed will rely on food reserves stored in the cotyledons until the first set of leaves begin photosynthesis